Hey kids, you're listening to the internet's wettest podcast about video games, consoles, and pancakes. The SML Podcast. What's up, everybody? This is the SML Podcast. I am your host, Joe. We've got a party cast lined up. Chris is here. Purnell is here. Brooke is here. How's everybody doing? Pretty good. Let me a nap. You want a nap? Purnell, are you (laughs) Uh, tired? He's sleepy. Yes. Want the bed to come to me. Are you sleepy? Every time uh, on the time. I'm not sleepy, but but I want two hours to just elapse, and so I will take a nap. (laughs) I Why do that. you want? Well, we can make this show feel like two hours of your life has disappeared. What's happening yeah. in two hours? If you want to this, just go by. Yeah, what uh, are you Chris? doing in two hours? Oh, nothing. That was just a joke. Oh, you just don't want to be here in general. Yeah, he's trying to bring That's some fair. of that Thursday energy. That's he's fair. trying to bring some of those vibes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's trying to bring the I want to get the hell out of here energy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Chris, come on. Uh, we don't do that. We don't do you that know it's here. A joke. You see? You know it's a joke when it starts off with the phrase, I'm not actually sleepy. <laughs> that's, okay. that's what we call a setup, and it's kind of an absurd one. Not that actually is fair. sleepy. What kind of poppycock is that? Poppycock? Yeah, you I, watch your language, sir. No, nah, poppycock yeah, is, is the way to show. block. <laughs> and it, yeah. ah, that's true. I don't think... I think I did get that. I did get a swear in my other show finally for the first time, too, because I don't Ooh. swear in any of this Dude. stuff. Uh, you swear in here? Bullshit! You don't swear on this show. Never, never. I'm a, I am a rated G gent. I don't swear. I'm all about that Disney live. Uh, oh, I love this. Uh, but, but I did have a track from a game that apparently is a legitimate swear word. I was like, wait a minute, seriously? The track title has it. So I was like, <laughs> I was on the episode. I was like, today's episode. This track is called "Just Fuck Around." That's the name of the track. And Rob looks at me like, "What the hell are you talking about?" I was like. Hey, I thought it'd be funny. This is like the one time I was like, I can swear on the show because the track title is a literal swear. Like, that's what it is. It's a proper that's use. Awesome. And he's like, you got to bleep that. I was like, I don't know. But um, it was from that Labyrinth of Refrain game. So of all the things, like a Tempe Sato track is like, yeah, I just want to call this track this. So now I'm starting to wonder what other video games have music tracks. Where they just have like swears and like when the shit goes down, like that would be the name of a track of a uh, fighting game or something. Like, huh, interesting. Hmm. But see, this that's, is that's our like, that's like, yeah, that has definitely an obscure music, you know, Facebook group assignment. Just saying, you know. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone knows of a group that focuses on obscure video game music, <laughs> they love that. They love that stuff. So yeah, ask them. Yeah, I mean, you got to make sure it's got to be obscure, though. Like, it's, it's got to be the real obscure stuff like Final Fantasy. Let's be real here. <laughs> a track that's named like that is probably going to be obscure. I don't think Mario has a track like motherfucking athletic theme. Nothing like that. No, nah, it wouldn't be that way. That would be so great it, if it did. Oh, it would be. But we also know it won't. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a not motherfucker. A... <laughs> I'd play it. Woo-hoo. I'd play it more. Mario has had it. Pretty good. <laughs> he is pissed. But yeah, so that base. that is my <laughs> but that is my genuine drive to like decide. That's the thing I'm trying to figure out right now. But mm-hmm. actually, Brooke, you appreciate this too. So I told remember I was like, I'm not buying any more board games. I'm done. I'm tapped out. No more. <laughs> yeah, no right, more. Right. Then I How went to Unpub last week. <laughs> yeah. Well, I went to Unpub and Carl was there. He's the guy that runs my local game shop, and he knows me by name at this point. So of course he just he just was like, so you go to he's like, Well, Pernell, this guy just bought eight games. So I mean, if you want to go for the high score, you gotta buy nine games today. It's like, I'm not buying nine games. I'm done. I'm out of the game, I'm out of the business. And then I walked out with two games and then won four games. So I was like, I walked out there with awesome. a stack of games anyway. It's like crap. Hell um, yeah. At least most of them are wins. That is true, but I still spent some chunk of change. Um, though I did look for that Hanso Teutonica, but they didn't he didn't have it there. He has it in his normal store, but he didn't have it at the unpub event, which is okay. unfortunate. But 
the best board game that they did have there that someone I'm hoping that they ever they managed to publish it. Someone had a game called um, Pirates of the High Tees. Ooh, like I'm looking at Google this tea. right now. You won't find it. This is Unpub. Oh, so yeah. Unpub is board games that are not published. People are trying to develop them in hopes of a developer or a, a publisher buying them. And it's a wonderful idea. Them. Do they oh, like self make a bunch of sets to sell at the show? No, no. So the idea is like they make the game, right? Or they're working on it and they show up at the convention and they pay for table space. People like myself show up and sit at their tables, play their games and give them feedback on rule changes, um, like what they liked about the game, what they disliked about the game. And it ended up being pretty fun. Like I've, I've developed, I'm getting a little bit better at this. Point where like some people are like, oh man, you're back. Come on, sit at my table. And I'm like giving people feedback. <laughs> like, okay, well, I'd recommend changing this rule to accommodate, you know, action points being used every, you know, getting regained every three rounds instead of every two rounds because you want to add a little bit more tension in this aspect of the game. And people were like, well, what, if you don't, if you know this much about these games, why don't you design them or develop one for yourself? I was like, you think I got? You think I have the energy for that level of scrutiny? <laughs> I'm the guy who criticizes, not the guy who <laughs> creates. <laughs> but the honest answer then becomes: I've played so many board games and so many video games that I've just internalized rules. So when it comes time geez. to talk about a game, it's like, hey, well, I played this game that does this, which would go great in your game that does this. But if you want to turn both of them on their heads, you should just do both of those and do this instead. Um, so Pernell got to win some board games and he got to say fuck on his show. Sounds it's like exciting a, times. A good, good weekend. Chris, how was your weekend? Uh, it was long. What'd you um, do for once? I uh, I took yesterday and today off. So this is the end of my weekend. Oh, yeah. oh. Well, did you do anything well, special? Um, played a couple shows on Friday. Oh. And, um, yeah, that was pretty fun. Recorded? Uh, Can we see him online at all? Uh, uh, recorded, yes. I don't know if you're going to get to see him. Um, uh, so, you aw. Know. <laughs> you can do like a private share, right? Like You can do one of those things where you YouTube it, but only people with the link can see it. Yeah, I can if if you're nice. Um, no, just kidding. You're I'm going to bootleg it onto nice. VHS. And... For now, it's pretty cool. I can vouch. Oh, okay. <laughs> see? <laughs> yeah. I'm always nice. This guy's all right. I want the link. All right, doesn't even well, cuss. You got you got that Brooke endorsement. Yeah, exactly. He doesn't even cuss. This ain't the Wednesday show. <laughs> <laughs> I love that he brought it home and just made it a little made it a little weird. That's my fave. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Spent like eight hours on Saturday. Was it Saturday or Sunday? No. What what day was it? I don't remember. Um, I think it was Monday. Yeah, I streamed uh through Chrono Trigger. Um, as the number 19 on the Nintendo Power Top 100 that I'm still doing. Nice. And uh, then I did a bonus eight hour st- uh, seven hour stream of more Chrono Trigger yesterday because um, I wanted to try and get all the endings on the stream. I got I got one additional ending, but now I, I'm set up to where I can get the rest pretty quickly. Nice. So you actually so. are intending to get every ending in the game before moving on to the next game? Well, I'm uh, moving on to the next game regardless uh, when the ne- when the weekend comes up. But I, I think I'm doing one more stream this week when I can uh, to just collect some more endings on Chrono Trigger. But no, uh, next this weekend is going to be the original Mega Man, which is inexplicably the top rated Mega Man game on the list. And the only oh, wow. the only That's- numerical Mega Man <laughs> that is to say <laughs> it's the only representation of the NES Mega Man's. That the, in the top 100, Mega Man 1? Yeah. That's yeah. It's that weird. disturbs it's, me. It, it's one of the most, yeah, it's, it's, it, it goes beyond hot take, and it's more like a slap in the face. At this point. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, normally it's, it's, a, only... it's a fight between Mega Man 2 and 3. This yeah. is just like, w- why? Some yeah. people are like, and 4, shut the fuck up, 4 is amazing. Uh, well, it's like not, 4. 4 is, yeah. 3. 5, it used five to be between that. 3. The thing is, five I didn't appreciate until I, like I was an adult because I didn't I couldn't afford Mega Man five as a kid, so I only I, had one through four. Yeah, five is for mature, discerning video game players. So, <laughs> with, with I high played a drug at a CJ Cutman show. Does that count? Yeah, that that counts. In fact, that counts for two, uh, double. So great job! Okay. You double played Mega Man five. <laughs> um, nice. Best the only music other, in the yeah, series. the only. The only other Mega Man on the list is Mega Man X, which is just, just the original, not X2 mm. or 3. Well, um, something about X1, I think, 
that's one of the cases where I do feel yeah. like the first one could totally fit over the others. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's totally like it's a great representation, but N- Mega Man One is not. But no. still, that is the next game to play. Um, I'm pretty good at the game, so it'll only take me about an hour to beat it, and then I move on to Super Mario RPG. So Ooh. it's gonna be cool. Ooh. And then oh. that's the last that's the last RPG for 17 more games. Nice. Uh, that's no, like uh, a lot of progress. More. Because the next uh, the next RPG on the list will be thirty seven, which is the original Final Fantasy. So we're getting into about to get into sports games and stuff and things I haven't ever played. Oh so hell yeah, be, the sports stuff! It's gonna be real how interesting you, going forward. <laughs> you just how will you consider the game. sports games as complete? Huh? How will you consider the sports games as complete to move on? Just kind oh, of play my some of them have endings. Um, some of those endings are hard to get. Uh, sometimes you just have to play through a game and like win or something. Uh, it's gonna kind of depend on you know the games, and I, I have resources online to kind of figure out like where are the ending credits, if there are any, or what's a good um, what's a good stopping point. Um, Is Ken so, Griffey yeah, on the list? No, it's not. The only baseball game is Baseball Stars hmm. on the NES. Full 162 game season, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you need to like you have to do something crazy to get the ending credits on that one. So I might be playing that one a while. Oh, geez. <laughs> anyway, Brooke, what were, how what was were you your asking, weekend? Um, oh, uh, it was pretty good. Before that, um, what was I asking, Chris? Dang, you oh, said I, I saw you just beat a game. You like just tweeted about beating one of your. One of your games you were working through. What was it? I can't remember. Was it? It was probably Chrono Trigger. Yeah. Yeah. How long did that take you? I was wondering. Uh, I think it was just sessions? around. It was around twenty hours. So oh, four. Cool. Did yeah. you notice an uptick in viewers for that? No. <laughs> oh man. There's there's no consistent upticks for me. Someone was um, telling me about a Chrono Trigger wedding, and now I can't remember. Who was telling me about that? Sounds cool. That's why I was in, that was why I was in San Francisco. Oh, yeah. oh my God. <laughs> oh. Now, don't you even start to give me a hard time about who remembers what from that day because we had a crazy hey, time. Hey, hey, I'll tell so. you, I absolutely, I do remember all of it. I just was not in the right state of mind while it was taking place, but I remember all of it. I it can't was, believe. It that was pretty awesome. funny. But Joe, my weekend was good. Thank you for asking. I baked a baked a pie. I didn't get as far as I wanted with it, but it's a new pie idea. I had fun with that. Um, tried Diablo Four. I know, like, we're not allowed to talk about it, but I enjoyed some aspects of it. And I was kind of like asking around what other games are like this, where I can kind of build out a skill tree and like upgrade my equipment in the same way. And was someone there, recommended was there Path like of some Exile. kind of NDA for that game because I thought it was basically. Just it's whatever. an open beta, but like I'm, I'm not supposed to talk about it on the show until it's out. And I know, like, we normally don't talk about betas unless we're unless, unless we're, we're clear to on yeah. the yeah. So but I didn't want to like have any opinions about oh, it. But yeah, I just think, you're. Can, and that's, that's you, can why you get I'm, us Diablo? <laughs> I can uh, talk to you after the call about my own account that you may be welcome to share, or you may not be. This is all strictly hypothetical. hypothetical. Get at me later. Um, oh, God. Uh, that's, like, that's kind of, kind of funny to me that uh, Brooke has less freedom to talk about this game than the like streamers who are streaming it right now. <laughs> That is I weird. Like, actually, I was going. I was going to ask that. Like, if it's an open beta, I'm surprised they won't let you talk about something that, and like, pretty much most people can play if they just get to the beta. Well, I mean, I shouldn't really get into the nitty gritty on the show, Joe, and I've kind of talked to this on the side when I took this job. But like, I'm not. I'm not really supposed to have like opinions on the show or on Twitter about like our uh, games, quote unquote, because uh, it could be. Fine. Yeah. And that, like, technically, like, you're not like, but they're not. They're never going to care. Like, um. I'm pretty small oh, like, fry. I'm pretty low level in the company too, and it's not like I'm in development or anything. I'm part of the employee experience, but like technically, I just didn't want. I didn't even want to go there or risk it. But I did want to say, like, I'm not. I'm not allowed to. I'm not, I'm not allowed to say positive things about it. And there were aspects I liked about it. And I just kind of want to pick y'all's brain if y'all think Path of Exile is a good step for me next. If I want to try games like yes, that, I haven't yes. really. If that's one that people have generally heralded in a high like, positive light. If you had an Xbox, I'd say Grim Dawn, too, because then we could play it together, because I have that, but don't have anyone to play it with. Um, Grim Dawn. I'm looking this up. Grim Dawn yeah, is a solid game, yeah. Honestly, yes, it is. I was the trying Victor out the- Vran games are solid, if you enjoy those. Victor Grim Dawn Vran. looks oh, yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, and again, if you had an Xbox, we could play co-op. 
Um, Dude, I've been learning so much about like games that I enjoy that I never would have picked for myself, specifically in the last couple of years from like being on the show and, and trying new things. I actually like I'm kind of a curmudgeon and I like to chill back on the couch, so I won't even try stuff if I'm like, oh, I can't use my controller. Um, and then I was surprised I wanted to actually like play with a mouse for this game. And I found that refreshing just because I'm kind of I'm still learning a lot about myself there, apparently, you know. My oh, favorite my part of the oh, beta was the one time I got in. <laughs> nice. Was it hard to get into the thing? <laughs> yeah, there were queues and there were I don't I don't know if there were widespread tech issues, but I ran into two or three instances where it would say it's connecting me and then it would just nothing it would just not connect so i don't know if something was up with my download or if the servers were just wonky but what i played i I really enjoyed i i cannot wait for diablo to come out like i know we always joke about oh if we get that one if we get that one if we get that if we get that one i'm fucking covering it so y'all can shut up i don't don't care if we get it or not (laughs) (laughs) Honestly, I do. I wouldn't mind playing that one again, like covered or otherwise. Just the fight, fact that like I bought Diablo three when it came out after not really doing much with two because of the whole I didn't have multiplayer to play it with, and then of course I ended up not having multiplayer on the third one despite friends saying, "Come on, we'll play together, bro." Um, but I beat the game once and then walked away. And of course, as you all know, that was the time when people were like this game is terrible. He screwed up Diablo. And then, as you also already know, the, the upgrade, their expansion, changed everyone's minds on that. But by the time all those improvements came, I was already done with the game and moved on to the other games in the backlog. So I would like to be there on the ground floor when they hopefully have it exactly as it needs to be from the jump. So I can actually be there when everybody else is playing it and not have my my attention diverted. So then get the full experience. Hell, we could probably all do it on the show together. Just I mean, play. Diablo never ends, so <laughs> I mean, there's an well, ending to the saying, story, it, but that the post game is like where the game begins. Oh, yeah, but, but, but that's that. what I'm saying. But back, to, but that's what I'm saying. But at the third game, though, the post game was barely there at the start, back when yeah. it first came out. So people were like, "This game is stupid. They ruined Diablo." But and they, then they, they were like, "Updated hey, we, it, we and to- then expansions came, and console releases came, and you never went back." Yeah, because it's the Pernell life. I had mm. other games to play by that point. I was <laughs> the backlog never stops. Um, and this was before I was doing game reviews, but it was like I couldn't, I didn't have time to do it. So I was like, "Well, I'll come play it another time." And another another time never came because I was playing everything else, and that was that. That was that was all she wrote. All the kit and caboodle, all the muck that was fit to rake. Other, you know, metaphors that I just feel like saying. Um, point is, I didn't get back to it. So it'd be nice to play the new one as it comes out in its peak form and have a good time with my friends. Um, let's I not have another Borderlands 3. Well. well, there it is. When you get your free copy, <laughs> let us know. I'll go out and <laughs> grab it. We can all play it. Cool. It'll be fun. Joe gets his hopeful review copy. He can join it for free. Joe, what'd you get it for? I know you like you typically prefer controller, is that right? Yeah, I'm I'm buying it on Xbox. Okay, sweet. Yeah, I'll, prob- I'll probably get the the legendary whatever edition. I don't sweet. know if it has crossplay. I I <sighs> think it does. If it doesn't, this may be putting a real clock on my on my Xbox yeah. on my on my resolution to get an Xbox this year finally. Oh, you were planning to get one? I know that. I want to fit into the group. I want to fit into the <laughs> SML Cool Kids Club. Am I the only one with that in Xbox? No, no I don't have one. have one. Oh, nice. Well, damn, Chris is pretty cool. I gotta go take stock, you guys. I gotta think about this. And uh, Andy Sperry, he doesn't have one. Oh. When I mean, I ended up getting one only because of... Big Adam doesn't have one. Actually, if you look to get one, you might end up doing what I did. I only end up getting one because of... um, they had, that, they had that deal at Target, which probably still exists. Well, it's not really a deal so much as just is a convenient way to pay for it. But um, you pay, you basically order it, and you just pay like thirty five bucks a month for two years. Oh, the all access you might be thinking, program. Yeah, you get the two years of Game Pass, which as a reviewer, I don't really have much need for because I never have time for Game Pass. But it's right. there; it prevents me from buying new games that I would have bought. Um, but it gives you Game Pass and the console, and you pay ten dollars less in the end than you would have if you bought it all separately immediately. So it just makes sense to do it that way. Um, 
and I'm still paying for it, but I barely notice it because, again, it's a small amount. So I recommend that if you're looking at getting one. And you know you can pay it off whenever, right? I, oh, absolutely, but there's no reason to because they're not charging me interest. So yeah. I have no qualms with carrying a debt if I'm not even charged interest for said debt. <laughs> yeah, now, if I, like I can pay my mortgage off early, shit, look it up. All Access so, yeah. really is a great way to get an Xbox. The fact that it comes with two years of Game Pass Ultimate, it, it that's... Like, if we get another deal Series deal. X, we're probably going to do All Access so we could have it out in the living room. And that getting the two right. years of Game Pass is just <laughs> easy, <sweet> convenient. <laughs> easy peasy, beautiful cover oh, girl. Man. But anyway, my weekend was mediocre. Uh, I got a year older, officially. Oh, oh you oh, kept that you? secret. Dude, did you turn off, like, your Facebook birthday thing? What even... I don't know. I told him like, happy birthday. A bunch of people did wish me happy birthday, but like oh, wow. Ashley, Ashley mentioned at midnight. She's like, "Yeah, it's not showing up for me, dude." What? So I don't fuck if I know. I haven't been checking Facebook a lot, but I, I tend to I tend to notice those things. I so. joked around that I think this is the first year where I got uh, less remarks than my age. <laughs> That's how old I'm getting. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> but I don't know. It was, I got ice cream cake, so that's all that matters. Hey, really. happy late birthday, dude. What flavor was that cake? Uh, Chocolate and vanilla ice cream with the crunchy, nice. the fudge crunchies in the center. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, yeah. That I know sounds what you're talking delicious. About. It's tasty. already gone. It's Carvel. It's gone. <laughs> well, dude, ice cream cake so good. It I've only so made. Fucking delicious. I made my own ice cream cake last year in the summer. I did a peach cake and I did. Peach ice cream, raspberry, uh, what do you call it? Like sorbet, like the ice cream without the milk. Ooh. It was fun, when dude. Get, when did you get so good at baking? Dude, I've always loved baking. I don't want to start off on a tangent that's going to last 30 minutes or whatever. But like, <laughs> I really, I like, I love you guys so much. And you probably don't know because I'm bad at communicating my love and my affection <laughs> and a way that is easy for me to show people I care about is make them a dessert. And I love desserts ever since I was a kid because... It's not something you need. It's something stupid that's actually bad for you. So if anybody ever makes you a homemade dessert, it's like saying, hey, you know, I want you to have this special thing that just really doesn't fucking matter. And I just have such hype for it. And I also have a giant sweet tooth and never stop thinking about it, man. So now now I expect an ice cream cake from you. Yeah, honestly, if I saw you in person, (laughs) it would be such a big deal. I think we can make it happen. Just box her up and ship the fucker. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe we'll do uh, what we talked about last week. Mag Fester packs or something at the end of the year. Yeah, do that. I'm going to be borrowing like a hotel kitchen and, and I don't know. We're going to go wild. I've been joking around <laughs> that I want to get a, a big ass suite for Mag Fest with like the full kitchen with it. So oh, if that I would happens, throw down on that. I thought you always did that. No, I only get a normal room. So like, cause I've come every time I've come to see you in your room in the room when I'm at Mag, it's always in these like big rooms with like the bar, the open bar, and all that stuff with the multi room connectors. Not for the past like five years. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I haven't hmm. I haven't really been like maybe the X Strike Suite you might be thinking of. Maybe that's what it was. Cause I just remember I went up to where you were and it was in a room with a lot of people. They were doing that power shots game. Oh that yeah, that and- was an X Strike party. Dang, X Ray oh, okay. Studios. Don't they like make movies or something? Yeah. Dude, Tim, if you're listening, guy. we miss you, dude. This sucks. He's it's been he's gone weeks. missing. He's he's been abducted. Tim, my heart. I think he Aliens took was my heart. Last week, wasn't he? No, no. he wasn't. <laughs> he's been off for two oh. weeks. <laughs> He'll be back next week. Don't worry. He'll he be back. Care. Thank God. He didn't run out for cigarettes. He'll be back. Oh my God. <laughs> Where's Cole? Oh, would... Shh, don't ask. <laughs> oh no. Dude, I've only done I've only done the rent a room together. Everybody throw down on a nice room for a convention thing once, and it was 2011. Like it's time, man. I I would love love something like that. Man, that would be awesome. See, I'm that guy that's I'm that guy that sleeps in bathtubs, so you know how cheap my ass gets. Oh man. But, but I'll make do for free. Are you like, do you, you have to curl into a ball to fit in the bathtub? How does that work for you, man? <laughs> no, my legs just hang out the side. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I've slept in a closet before on the floor. I've uh, slept in a bathtub. I've done all kinds of sleeps. But now as I get older, of course, my back hates me. So that junk doesn't happen as much anymore. Yeah, but I, I still find that. ways to be cheap. 
Anyway, should we get to reviews? We got a couple of games to talk about tonight. Uh, we should probably get to this. I reckon a couple cheap. of games. Yeah, <laughs> there's a couple. Okay, it's not okay. a lot. There's only six. It's not a crazy lineup. And mine's like a mobile game, so I'm not going to take too much of y'all's time. It's it's pretty cool though. Yeah, the reviews are only as long as you make them. Hey, I can't I can't <laughs> control how immaculate these games are. <laughs> well, let's find out how immaculate they are, because first game to talk about tonight uh, is, haha, first game is Backbeat, developed and published by Ichigo Ichie, released March 16th on Xbox One Series X and S, Switch, PS4, PS5, and PC for $29.99, a truly creative strategic puzzle game, manipulate four threads of time to guide your band through perilous predicaments, manage squad resources to maximize your score, experience an homage to 1990s ensemble dramedies, customize your music with audio f- effect pedals and more Pernell, tell us about your time with backbeat so backbeat takes place in the glorious glorious 90s where a lady by the name of stephanie watson or watts for short decides she wants to join start up a funk band and to do so she has to recruit three other friends to play different instruments and then go through the trials and tribulations that would be friends in the 90s forming a band to ultimately do so. And of course there's band rivals and precarious situations and the like that goes along with it. But, being that this is a video game by Ichigo Ichie, you can probably speculate that one, there's music involved, and two, well that's it, really. Uh, (laughs) There's music involved. (laughs) But, it's actually pretty interesting how this plays out. Although, after playing the demo for it, I'd say it was like a year ago? This definitely is a lot tougher than I thought it would be, and that's a good thing. But it also means that I didn't beat this game before review release because <laughs> god damn, god damn. It does get um, tough. It does get it tough. Gets, because it people, people tough. gotta remember this is not a rhythm game. A lot of people see this and they think it's a music game and they they gotta play to a beat and they have to have rhythm timing, and it's not. It's a it's Sokoban. Which is interesting, though, because one thing that comes to mind when I hear that, because like you said, people complain about the music element. But what this game does do is it subconsciously teaches you concepts of music in the form of a puzzle game. So I'll get into that in a second. But the actual gameplay and the way it works is um, the game will slowly introduce mechanics to you. But at their core, you control four different characters and you are tasked with moving them around a map and ultimately reaching a checkpoint or a goal point. It starts out real simple. Stephanie Watts can walk around, and she kind of moves in a pretty staggered motion, like one, two, three, four. She might take like two steps at a time. Um, Then you get Toshi, who takes like three steps at a time. And then next you get Josh, who's like a freaking barreling tank. He's also my favorite character in the game, who... uh. Oh, I'd be afraid that he's my favorite personality-wise. He's my least favorite <laughs> mechanically. Um, he moves a ridiculous distance, like seven tiles at a time. But unlike the others, he stops on a dime. So if he runs into an object, he just stops. Whereas the other characters, if they can't take their full step, They'll they can't off. make the movement. They bounce off. Um, so you have to work these into the decisions you make when you're trying to resolve these ma- these levels. And just as you start to get used to that, they introduce another character named Chaz who takes single steps, which means he's a rough one to move around with. And you might be thinking, well, that's not a big deal. Taking single steps has to be the best thing that you could possibly do in a game like this. And that's where you'd be kind of wrong, because this is when the game becomes really particularly challenging, because you have a few mechanics at your disposal that you have to utilize in order to properly motivate and move these characters. There is a shared timeline in the upper left corner. And the timeline is meant to represent... Let me see if I can convey this in a way that flows well. The timeline is meant to represent the amount of time you have from the beginning of the song to the end of the song. Did I say song? Yes. Um, And I'll get to why in a minute. But just think of it as the time the level takes to conclude. Um, Each time a character takes a step, they will use up a portion of the timeline in reference to the way, the way their character moves on the game. Every time your character takes a turn, like turns on the map, um, that takes a shared resource. It's referred to as a stagger. Um, so you have to kind of balance out when characters turn versus when they go straight. 
And then sometimes you have to make a character rest, which is not move at all, so that other characters can move instead, or you might have to wait for an obstacle to go by before you move again. And you have to juggle these mechanics in such a way that when you finally get everybody to the checkpoint or the final goal point and you resolve the level, all the characters' movements will play harmoniously. And what you come to realize is that every character is playing an instrument as you progress through the level with each direction they take playing a different sound from their instrument, like going up and down versus left and right on a different square. It's actually pretty impressive how they got this to work. Um, and all of them play harmoniously and you get a different song and when you finish the level, you get your own personalized song for that stage based on how you maneuver through it. And that's what I meant by the end of the song being represented by the timeline, because you're making these movements to solve the puzzle. Like say, for example, get all the characters to the arcade machines while also avoiding the security guards and getting coins from the coin machine. By the time you do that, you realize you've played a song and it's pretty interesting to see. But the part that's giving me my challenges right now, which is also the part, the reason why I haven't beaten the game yet, is twofold. One, I'm obsessed with clearing, clearing stages with an S plus ranking, <laughs> um, and they, and at first it seemed pretty simple. But what I came to realize is that certain levels, and um, if, if David is listening to this, I think you unlock stages by getting S pluses. So I'd get an S plus. And they say, go to the next stage, which is like a parking lot of the pizza joint or whatever. But then I'll see a little like extension to the level before that, which leads to a new stage. And this level is actually hard. Like, oh, crap, I wasn't expecting that. So now I got to figure out the puzzle by, you know, moving characters, pushing the cancel button to make them walk backwards when something doesn't work the way I need it to. And it takes a while to figure some of these levels out. This is not an easy game. Not to say it's an insurmountable game or an impossible game. It's just that you're not going to play this puzzle game and just steamroll it. You're actually going to be playing an act authentic puzzle game. And that's a good thing. I don't play, I don't buy puzzle games to not be puzzled. I buy puzzle games because I want to have a challenge that I can surmount and conquer and feel good that I did it. And this game will do that. And if you're not doing the puzzle sections, you will have the moments in, the, in between where the characters are interacting with each other. And even though they're not voiced, I do like the way they're written. They do have, you know, nice personalities that kind of bounce off of each other. And they don't necessarily just immediately get along with each other. They have trials and tribulations. They're not just immediate friends who just go through thick and thin together. They, they have, they, they butt heads and such. Um, well, though, we, we've talked to David multiple times about this game. How do you feel the end result is uh, compared to like what we've talked to him about and the demo that you tried out. Do you think it, it lived up to its potential? Do you think it exceeded your expectations? Do you think there's some stuff it could work on? What are your thoughts? I would say like, I feel like the only thing I, I was like wishing I could do is actually, I guess there might be two things that might be helpful to better enhance the game. And this is just my personal take. Others might think something different, but one, um, I understand why the music in the stages themselves is kind of like subdued. That's because it's playing the backbeat. <laughs> There's the title. Um, it's playing uh. the backbeat to the song, and you're hearing the music being formed as you move the characters around. But the music in between the stages, I wish there was a little bit more variety in that, um, especially because it's pretty clear that there are talented musicians behind this game. So I know they are capable of pr- having more music on the interlude sections of the stages. Um, the second thing might be, I'm a little challenged on learning some of these, these mechanics. I'm picking them up, but I'm also, we just literally had a discussion about how I break people's board games. So you can understand how I'm good at picking <laughs> up rules and games. That's not true for everybody. And I can imagine there's a couple of cats there being like stagger. Tell you me stagger. And even though the game does kind of g- explain it to you a little bit, it might be better if they had a straight up section that said, we are moving the characters and showing you when the stagger kicks in. We're showing you when stagger is regenerated, you know, so on and so forth to make it easier for the concept to stick and not have to like kind of butt your head against it to figure it out. Um, also, even though I, it doesn't hurt the game. It's just a general chuckle I've had about it is that it takes place in 1995. It does really cool VHS mechanics when you fast forward in slow motion and pause in the game, but there are DDR machines in the arcades and I cannot stop acknowledging that when I play this game. I'm like, wait a minute. DDR didn't come out until 1999. And they're in the arcades in 1995. 
what's happening here. But at the same it's time, I'm also glad history. that DDR. Oh, no, no. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I'm also okay with the fact that DDR is getting represented in an arcade because, well, I love DDR, so <laughs> no complaints here, except for the whole time thing. But it's like you said, maybe it's an alternate universe where Stephen Strange didn't fuck something up. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> bam, swear word. Uh, uh-huh. But Pernell said a fuck. But, that's right. I did. But all in all, though, I do. <laughs> unique. Uh, I do ultimately feel though wow. that he did uphold his up. <laughs> what? No, 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 no. I thought about whispering the unique, and I was like, "That's a little." I, I don't think anybody's gonna get that if I whisper that. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that I was like, "This will make Chris laugh," so I'll do it. <laughs> you did great oh job. My God. I'm so happy. Sorry to interrupt for like, now. That, that felt like That's just so- for me. It no, was, I I was like, Wait, Sweet. <laughs> it just fell oh. right. All right. We, Our show interruption is over. <laughs> I do I do feel as though this lived up to what he had mentioned in our interviews and discussions. And trust me when I tell you that if I did not like this game, despite thinking he's a really awesome guy, I would absolutely say this game is not good on the show. I'd have no qualms with that. I feel sad, but I have no qualms doing that. But thankfully, I don't have to because I do like the game. <laughs> the, the, aside from the, the, the two things I mentioned earlier, I'm perfectly fine with this game. I do believe that um, it may not be for everybody, but that doesn't mean that the game can't be played by everybody. Just like I said, it's a challenging game. You're going to be working to solve some of these puzzles. And if you're the type of person that needs to sit down and just kind of have the solutions handed to you on a plate, just walk away right now. But if you're okay with the idea of someone taking a concept and kind of turning it on his head a little bit, i.e. the Sokoban moving, you know, pushing characters around, but doing it for a specific reason for solving specific spatial puzzles, then I think that this is the game that you'd like to try. I think it's solid and it's a good time to play. Um so I guess I can give my verdict. At yeah, this point. 30 bucks. What is your official verdict? I do think it's a good time. And honestly, I didn't even get to the point where you get the freaking abilities yet, which is why I might have to talk about this game again in a few weeks. But I think it's a solid buy, even with the mechanics I have acknowledged or gotten to because I'm enjoying it. Cool. Uh, next game to talk about is Alice Gear Aegis CS Concerto of Simulatrix. Develop- good job. I try. Sometimes I get it right. Developed by Pyramid, published by P-Cube, released March 16th on Switch, PS4, and PS5 for $29.99. Vice has taken your world and only you can take it back as an actress with an aptitude for wielding the special gear you train under Aegis, a corporation charged with defense against the Vice. Fight against your fellow teammates in simulations using unique customizable... Customizable... Jesus... Unique customizable combinations of your Alice gear to get stronger, faster, and better than ever before. Chris, tell us about your time with Alice Gear Aegis CS Concerto of Simulatrix. I'll, I'll tell you, they also dropped the U word in the Switch description for the game too, nice. which I just because nice. uh, <laughs> I just bookmarked it. Okay, so Alice Gear Aegis CS Concerto of Simulatrix is a uh, <laughs> so it's. It's weirdly like the prelude to a game, more so than like an actual game I kind of found. But uh, there's there's a way to kind of view it that that makes it make sense. Um, So this is a a a dog fighting game, um, you know, like airplanes that aren't actually dogs, you know, doing dog fighting, Um, except that the planes are, you know, attractive anime girls who have uh, like not quite mech suits, I suppose, but just like um, big leg things and and big arm things and uh, a, a gun and a sword. And um, they shoot lasers at each other. And it's a behind the, the shoulder kind of view, uh, completely free motion. And uh, the goal is basically just it's you against another opponent. You got to get their life bar to the bottom before they get your life bar to the bottom. So it's a lot like a fighting game in that sense. Uh, Like a fighting game, it's got a roster of 20 very similar looking characters um, because they're just all cute anime girls, like without (laughs) exception. There's not a single exception to this rule. Just waiting for Aki to come in here like anime girls. What? And it's got them. Uh, So, yeah, the... um, the whole, uh, so the plot of it, you know, and it, it's, un- I, I should, 
it's usually unfair to point out the plot of a fighting game or a shooting game. Um, but because this is like also half of a visual novel, like you kind of have to talk about the plot because, um, yeah, there's so when you start a game, you pick your character, your one character, your one character is usually, um, in fact, I would say without exception, actually part of a trio of other characters. Um, this factors into the gameplay too, but, um, it will start the visual novel, um, plot of your character that you chose and uh it's them and the other two characters that are on their team generally um and they just kind of like talk about the events uh usually they have some kind of maybe little subplot going on um i did play through a character who actually had this whole other like thing going on that just happened to coincide with the events of the game um and so yeah it and it has a lot of dialogue, and it's a lot of, uh, like what we talked about in that Neptunia game, it's, you know, it's just girls standing on either side of the screen, one in the middle, and um, and they just take turns talking, right? It's it's a visual novel in that sense. They're fully animated, but they are still posed, and they still, like, react and, and read as if it's a visual novel. So, um... <laughs> sorry. Um, you get to... The map, which is uh, basically, it's like a map in Darius. It's a it's a hexagonal um, map of like these different connected levels, and you choose one. You could choose one level or a level that is directly above or below it, and um, depending on um, which level you choose is going to depend on which other connected level you can then choose after that. And there's a couple of little. Uh, curveballs in it like uh, a warp field that takes you to another part of the map where you can kind of skip a section um there's sometimes item <laughs> blocks which give you uh extra items but they're just like accessories for your character to change their costume it's nothing like super important um but then most of them are battles and so you get the battle um it's you versus one of the other you know 25 girls or whatever and uh, I actually, I literally didn't even count the amount of characters. It just, it showed me this character roster and all I just saw was different colors of hair. And I was just like, I'm not counting this. So it was, <laughs> it's like 20 to 25 other characters. Um, you start the fight with them and, you know, if you win, then you get experience points and you get money. Uh, experience points are for raising your rank. I don't know what rank actually does for you. It doesn't seem to like make you any better at fighting. I think it's just... I don't know. Uh, it has yet to be said um, in the game. However, money is is king because that straight up buys you upgrades to your character's uh, repertoire. So every part of your character, that is to say their gun, their sword, their legs and their arms, um, their armor arms and their well, they call it torso. But none of these girls are covering their torsos with anything except for, <laughs> you know, the bare minimum of cloth uh, in spandex. So uh but no, like the, the arms armor, the leg armor, all of that can be upgraded uh, with one of like it, there's a cheap upgrade and there's an expensive upgrade and that's it. Um, so if you get the cheap upgrade, the expensive upgrade, it raises the stats of that particular um, thing because each one of those has a, a move that it can do. And we'll talk about that in a second. Um but, and, you know, it raises it to some degree. Sometimes it lowers other stats to a degree, um, which you know, actually leads to a different thing, a different customization, is that you can actually um, also add in three sort of uh, stat uh, aspects kind of thing. They're kind of like accessories in that, like, one will, like, straight up raise your attack by a percentage. One will raise your HP by a percentage. But some of them will be like, this gives you a lot of attack, but you lose HP and you lose this other stat. Um, so they're kind of like just ways to customize your character to the, the play style that you like. Um, so it's kind of cool. It, it's not just saving money and making your character super powered. It's like there is some strategy involved to um, using specific like things, <clears throat> but not a whole lot. <laughs> um, so anyways, so the actual battles, the way those work is that your character, like I said, can fly around free roaming. You can go up, down, left and right, and you are targeting another character who is doing the same. You have your gunshot, which the guns, uh, depending on the character, uh, will be quite different. So some characters have like a medium shot that they can blast quite a lot. Um, but if you run out of ammo, quote unquote, you can't use that gun until you stop using it for a second and then it refills its ammo. 
it's actually infinite ammo, but it's basically like you're you're shooting a, a clip, right? So um, there's like machine gun style. There's bazooka style, which is really cool. There is a character who straight up has a bazooka and a giant hammer. I love her. Um, and yeah, so there's there's that kind of thing. It's a distance weapon, and you target it. You can charge it up. Um, different strategies for every character, and it's pretty cool. Then you have your close-up weapon, your clash weapon, which is either like a sword, uh, a hammer, a spear. Like, it, again, depends on the girl, and they all do different things, which is pretty cool. Uh, the legs and the uh, arms actually have their own moves as well, and they're assigned to the, uh, the shoulder buttons. And uh, you have to charge the leg move. Um, and usually you don't have to charge the, uh, the arm move, but they basically do things like they'll send like, uh, temporary turrets to shoot like some shots at your enemy. So you can like plant the turrets in one place and then kind of weave around the side and like shoot your, shoot the other girl while the turrets are firing at her and, you know, kind of divides their attention. That's a good strategy. Um, there's plenty of cool stuff to do like there. And then if you fill up a certain gauge, you could do a power move, which is also pretty cool. So yeah, battles, amazing. I, I love the battles in this game. I can play it all day and all night. I played it for four hours earlier today, and I literally couldn't stop, even though I had to move on to like my other game. <laughs> I was like, I'm not going to have time. Uh, and I'm going to play it tonight, too, rest assured. Um, anyways, after, uh, after you, know, you get so far on the map, you get into one of three uh, planned sections where you're going to fight three on three. So now the other two girls in your group are going to join the fight. You're going to switch between them, and the enemy also can switch between their three girls. And what you're doing there strategically is choosing the right girl to counteract the other girls' like weapons and powers. Also, if your character gets injured, um, you can put them... If you change swap the character, they can slowly refill their HP. Um, you know, to a certain point. So, like, that kind of helps you uh, last a little bit longer in the fight. Um, you have two three-on-three -three battles in a row, and the second one is going to feature another lengthy story section where you learn more about your characters, their relationships to each other, their motivations, and what they care about. Uh, these are, you know, they're good. Uh, some of them are a little, you know, tropey, but, I mean, what, what can we expect? I mean, <laughs> you're talking to somebody who enjoys, you know, Idea Factory games, so I, I am fine, 100% on board. Um, and then, yeah, after the third three-on-three -three battle, roll credits, choose another character if you like, and uh, keep it going. You got 25 storylines to go through, so, you know, this is endless uh, entertainment. And all of the growth that your character gets and their upgrades uh, is saved between playthroughs, and that includes your two other girls that you can buy equipment for and upgrade as well, uh, even while you're just playing, like, essentially solo. So there's a lot of like, you know, the more money you get, you, you, there's no shortage of things to spend money on. And like eventually you can just buy like costume parts like, you know, Groucho nose or like, you know, um, you know, cat ears or, uh, you know, a bunny costume, whatever you want. <laughs> Lots of costumes. And each one is un unique. Unique. Speaking of unique, the store page has three <laughs> uses of unique amazing with uh it says an exciting 3d battle arena with lovable characters and unique customizable gear and then it says uh fight against your fellow teammates and simulations using unique customization customizable i i fucked this up during the intro and i fucked it up here wow. too and then uh choose from a variety of cute teammates unique playable characters with different personalities and distinctive skill sets i can't believe it there's only one unique in the switch page but um Anyway, yeah, so uh, all this to say, this is not unique. Uh, it literally is uh, Azur uh, Lane Crosswaves, but in the sky instead of on the water. <laughs> but that's great because I freaking love Azur Lane Crosswaves, and I played that to death, and I will play this to death. Well, it's <laughs> 29. Question for, wait, 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 yeah, wait, yeah, wait yeah. I got one question. So I'm a, if you haven't played these games, it's totally understandable. But have you played uh, either Virtual On Back in the Day or Psychic Force 20, like 2042? Have not. Pickleberries. I was going to ask how, how this game <laughs> compares to those. Uh, sorry, yeah, my only frame of reference for this kind of game, um, I have two of them, and that is the uh, Toho, uh, what is it? I can't remember the second word, but it's like Toho Burst 5. On, that was an early Switch game. Has the First battle. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that has the behind-the-shoulder uh, dogfight fighting style, 
and it's like that, but also with the uh, level growth and and um, visual novel aspects of uh, Ozzer Lane Crosswaves, and also the all female cast. I mean, you uh, play a role in this game. You're kind of like the you're. They call you Captain, and when they're referring directly to the player, and um, you're kind of this invisible godlike person Manager. so that arguably is the only male character <laughs> but i mean if you're if you are playing this and you are female then obviously that's not the case either but yeah that's <laughs> anyways um, right, well, yeah, it's, and what, it's 30 bucks what's your verdict yeah i'm gonna say 30 bucks it's it is worth it for the gameplay and for uh the like i said lots and lots of customization and like just this really replayable loop uh that i really enjoy however <clears throat> just know that this game never moves beyond basically what is like supposed to be the tutorial for what would be a longer game. Like it's these girls training each other and fighting each other to practice to fight against some big evil that is outside of this game's scope. Uh, so this game like is like battle athletes. <laughs> yeah, this game is entirely framed within just these girls training and fighting each other and and essentially congratulating each other. There's like no real contention in this game. Everybody <laughs> is so nice to each other That's and they're nice. very supportive and they all understand that this is not like they're not really competing against each other. They do work for different corporations or whatever cuz you know capitalism has a weird um <laughs> a weird plot element in this uh in this game. But apart from that, yeah, everybody is just like lovable and, and they love each other and they're very nice. And some of them are like slightly bratty, but that's that's anime for you. Um, but yeah, so don't don't go in, even though this is a visual novel, don't go in like even as they're laying crosswaves. Eventually, at the end of the game, like the big bad shows up and interrupts your training and you actually have to fight for real. Uh, that doesn't happen in this game, at least not that I could tell. I only played through like six or seven of the girls. uh storyline so far but that's quite a lot and yeah. uh and yeah it kind of always happens the same way so it's like yeah um so 30 bucks absolutely worth it for the gameplay loop uh for just the sheer fun of it and the the collectability um honestly wish they would have just put another whole nother game on top of this one and and charge 60 bucks i'd have bought it so maybe they'll come out with like another one they are coming out with an anime i found out so oh. who knows where this is going I'm, uh, I don't know. We'll find out. But if if yeah, another one comes along, you, we'll try to cover it. Cool. If you do anime, Chris, at all, um, mm. look up an old one called Battle Athletes because based on what you said, I think you would like that show. I'll try. Yeah, I'll 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 check out an anime. I just uh, there aren't a lot that I really enjoy a lot. So okay. Yeah, I'm not an anime athletes. guy either. So I'm with you, Chris. Uh, next game to talk about is Blocky Farm, developed by Jet Toast and Forever Entertainment, published by Forever Entertainment. Released March 16th on the Switch for $9.99. Enter the charming world of Blocky Farm, where you can manage your lands, take care of animals, harvest fields, deliver goods to the town, and create friendships with citizens. Create the farm of your dreams and grow big. Starting your village life today is easy. Brooke, tell us about Blocky Farm. I had a pretty good time with this. You know, I asked for this game because I thought, hey, I want to chill and play a little silly farming game. Spice things up a bit. I've had some very deep, very cool artistic pieces lately to review, and that's been awesome. But I was feeling the vibes on this one. So for a silly little game. That palette this, cleanser. Yeah. And this like it really felt like that to me when I was looking for games. I was like, you know what? This is right up my alley. And you probably noticed because I asked for like four mobile cooking games at once. You're like, man, she's on one right now. Uh, I was glad <laughs> I got this. Uh even though it's more farmy than cookie, but you get to cook a little. But anyway, for a silly little game, uh, this game delivers in spades. It is what it says it is. You're going to manage a blocky farm. Extremely Minecraft-esque graphics. With some little House on the Prairie and Stardew appreciation vibes, this game, you know, it opens up with the black and white nostalgic cinematic, asking the player to remember the good times and all the Grandpa's Farms games of old that they've played before, which is pretty funny. So they're already kind of saying, hey, this probably isn't your first farming game, and that's good, because they're going to do a little bit of a spin on that and make some little jokes. So we open up on a small farm, just a couple buildings and fields, but if you zoom out, you can see miles and miles of untamed voxel wilderness ripe with unhammered rocks and unaxed trees. I wrote this when I was really like Purnell level sweepy, so bear with me here. 
<laughs> we, we start a pretty comprehensive tutorial here, which, as you may recall, I always appreciate because I really need things handed to me, uh, and I need them explained several times. So a variety of rich guys, mayors, neighbors, pretty ladies are all going to drive their different uh, trucks and cars onto your farm and take turns teaching you the way of this new country life while some goofy yet wistful country music with some harmonicas plays. Uh, you learn how to plant wheat and other crops, turn that wheat into chicken feed at a silo that you build right at the beginning. You take that feed to your new chickens that you buy after you make them a little chicken hut. You feed them, you get their eggs, you pet them, and you uh, then collect their affection hearts to raise their love uh, just like you collect their eggs. And you can sell the eggs for money or to complete little quest-type tasks. This is going to happen with corn, with cows. You're going to do a full circle of life thing where you grow stuff and feed it to other stuff you're growing that you turn into animal byproducts and or love, uh, both of which benefit you with money. So how is this game different than other farming games that, uh, by the way, started as a mobile app, which we'll talk about more in the rating section? Well, it's actually a really smooth experience. I played a lot of mobile apps that have been ported to Switch. A lot of them are like visual novels or gotcha tummy games, and they're normally not so smoothly ported. And if things don't work, you know, in the Switch version that would have worked in the mobile, usually I see little leftover snippets of that. But there's nothing like that going on here, even there there are some big changes when they ported this. If it's a really smooth experience if you play it with the touch screen. More on that in the rating section, too. It's got a really great soundscape, funny country vibe going on that, that fits the funny dialogue. Very bright, poppy, like, active graphics. And if you like that rotating voxel look like this, it's really well done there, too. Just really exciting to look at. But the main thing that sets this game apart is how weird it gets in little ways as you progress through the game. And it gets weirder and weirder as you get further in, which I gotta say I'm here for. As you learn how to, chair, to, as you learn how to care for chickens and cows... A nice lady will arrive on the farm that allows you to pick a dog or cat as your companion and pet. While I'm angry that I couldn't have a rabbit as a pet, I will say that wild <laughs> rabbits I'll say that wild rabbits pop up on the farm from time to time, along with cute little birds and frogs and stuff, and they sort of bop around. You can't do much with them, but they have like a little mind of their own. And it's very sweet, so they're forgiven rabbit wise from me. Uh, but anyway, back to the dog. You learn to pet him, you learn to feed him, and you learn to play with him with different toys, like a ball or a stick. Uh, but his health is comprised of three different stats, food, happiness, and energy. How do you give your dog energy? Well, you have two options. You can play fetch or ball or whatever toy with him all the time to keep him active and keep his energy up. And it really does work like fetch, where you sling it and he has to go get it and you have to take it out of his mouth, put it back in your inventory. Or... You can feed him energy drinks, which if you're not playing on the Switch and you're playing on the phone, you need to pay for those energy drinks with gems and the app purchase uh, and the in-app purchases section of it. And it gets pretty sad. Can this dog want a Red Bull? Dude, and it looks like an energy drink too. And and you know, I've only played for a few hours, but so far that's the only thing I can give energy drinks to. Like not even myself, and I'm really loving it. Uh, and the dog never fucking shuts up. He's completely obnoxious, which I found to be really real as well. Uh, but yeah, I don't have much to say about the dog energy drink thing, except it's a little dark, and I appreciate the flavor there, because it feels very real. You can also dress your dog up in different little hats and sunglasses you earn from a randomized prize deck that you draw from when you open treasure chests as you play through the game and unlock different re rewards for completing tasks. You can also tap the screen to clean up his poop, and we end up doing this sometimes for the farm animals, too, for some extra change and XP sometimes. So we got some nice Tamagotchi stuff going on here, too, with everything else. And it's got a lot, like lots of little mini-game stuff kind of going on seamlessly worked into the game. Now, a silly mobile or farming game. Hold on, one second. Really only has to have three things to make me happy. Outside of the farming. I want a pet. Check. I want a bakery. I don't always expect it, but for this game... Check. This game, what can I say? I feel, like, extremely seen. They gave me a bakery, like, really quick. Like, right after I got cows and they gave me other stuff. They're like, here, bake some bread. I don't know what to do with you. And it's pretty fun. Big win. The last thing I want is the reason I'm even part of this group today and how y'all met me. Build relationships with 2D towns people and maybe even marry one of them someday in order to get them to move in with me on my farm and take some of my chores off my plate. Well, I haven't gotten... as old as time. Yeah. <laughs> this is why marriage is even invented, but don't get me started on that uh, rant. While I haven't gotten very far into the social stuff, there is relationship building in this game. There's a lot of characters, and you can meet a fair amount of townspeople in this game. I understand that it doesn't ever get crazy deep, uh, but it's not trying to be that kind of game. It does have a wonderful sense of humor about it, and I think that we start to see that in the social stuff even more than the dog stuff. 
this game's got a lot of little surprises, like the dog energy drink that's going to make you go, huh, maybe the people who made this game are like kind of cool. Maybe. <laughs> like, uh, the store page is two uniques. Nice. Oh boy. Yes, we've got Love Animals. It's a unique system of animals, love, and interactions. And then go fishing, swim by boat, and catch 16 unique species. I will say, I think in both, I, I, I really enjoyed this game. I think in both uh, of these instances, we can laugh a little bit at the unique because I will, I, I don't think the animal love system is really doing anything crazy, but I think <laughs> they made it fun and I got to hand it to him for that. Uh, Thimber asking if, if it's only on Switch. I believe it is. I don't see it listed on other consoles. It's uh, Switch. Maybe on uh, Steam. I don't know if it's on Steam, but I will say it's on Android and, and iOS um, because I ended up downloading this for Android just to see the differences. And I'll go into that when we talk about uh, rating if you want. Well, then let's get to it. Tell me what right. you think of the game. Well, mobile for farming games aren't bucks. for everyone. Mobile farming games aren't for everyone. This is true. If you're considering playing one and this sounds potentially good to you, I think this is actually one of the better ones out there, especially if, if you are trying to like play it on phone or compare it to the games like that on Switch. But this was designed as a mobile game. And while I think it has been successfully ported to Switch, there are just a couple things we need to know going into playing this that I kind of wish I'd known but wasn't a big deal ultimately. One, this game was designed to prompt in-app purchases, and there's nothing buggy or tacky left behind like that, kind of like I mentioned earlier, that would feel weird on the Switch version, but we haven't been given a ton of creative solutions to mitigate that stuff, like, oh, if I want this bakery to be built faster, uh, I could have used a gem here, but gems aren't a thing in this version, so I'm just going to wait a little bit and do other things. This can be slightly clunky in a way to me, but ultimately, what I'm going to say is, I noticed the Android app for this game was free. So I played it as well for a while to do my due diligence here. I think overall the Switch is the better purchase because whether you catch this game on sale right now for $8.99 or whether you buy it at a full price, $9.99 I think it was later, uh, you're never going to pay more than that. And this game is pretty long and seemingly endless, so I do think it's a great deal if you're like me and you enjoy this sort of game in general. And I'm going to be real with y'all, I've spent some money on mobile games I'm not even going to play, so... <laughs> It was always kind of a cool deal for me. If I see a if I see an app I really wanted to play, but I didn't want to get in the app purchases, get released to Switch, I'll try it. Uh, but two, number two, I will say, while I think this game was modified well, imported to Switch almost perfectly, it wasn't really designed to play with the controller while you sit back on the couch and look at a big old screen. Now, y'all know that I prefer to play like that, and while I consider docking points for that. As, as far as the rating goes, because that's how I like to play on Switch. Ultimately, I can't actually knock this title for that at all, because at the end of the day, if we're comparing it to the phone, it's still got bigger, prettier graphics in the phone on the Switch. I think it was well done, and I just I do think it works better to play with the touchscreen and drag and drop. But I will say, officially, my only real complaint for this game to the developers is I don't think they realize they need to say in the tutorial very clearly that it's that much of a better experience on touchscreen. Guys, Jet Toast, uh, you patch it. You could just tell people at the beginning, uh, because once I tried it on the phone and switched back to Switch after I did that, I understood the gameplay more, and I had a way better time with this. And that actually took me from a try it to a buy it for Farmy Farm players like me. Nice. Farmy Farm. And I don't know what it. triggers it. It might be owning specific titles by Forever Entertainment, I own a handful of games by Forever Entertainment, and Blocky Farm is showing up as four ninety nine for me. What? So if you own if you own select Forever Entertainment titles, you could potentially get this game for half off. I I think that's an amazing deal because I played like a lot of these type of games, and I was even thinking for nine ninety nine, like if this is really your thing, it's a it's a shitload of content. Um, so I didn't see that. That is no joke. That's a really good deal for like if you enjoy this, how much you would play this game. Yeah, if you qualify, jump on it. So, All right, Brooke, that's it for you. I'm going to hang out secretly because I want to hear a little bit of Vernal Edge, but then I'm going to pop off randomly at some point and eat my churros. Uh, so I'll officially say goodnight now, and then I will disappear <laughs> like a phantom <laughs> randomly later if that is cool. No, we should we just be like, you all y'all yachting free, you bye. Leave. Yeah, like, all y'all yachting free, bitches, I'm out. <laughs> all right, it. peace. I'll wait till later, I'll go. Enjoy, <laughs> later, your, you guys. enjoy your enjoy your tur churros. Yes, enjoy the churros. And maybe uh, I'll unmute and just chew into the microphone because they're still crispy somehow. <laughs> they're very crispy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be like that. I don't think I've ever All had right. a soggy churro. Dude, how do they do it? How do they do it? Anyway, <laughs> they make the churros with the flavoring inside. <laughs> 
Anyway, oh take God. two. Anyway, take three. Uh, <laughs> next game to talk about is Vernal Edge, developed by Hello Penguin Team, published by PID Games. Released March 14th on Xbox One, Series X and S, Switch, PS4, PS5, and PC for $21.99. Vernal Edge is a 2D action-packed Metroidvania featuring an intense combat system, tight platforming sequences, and a powerful story of rivalry, revenge, and growth. Uh, Vernal, tell us about Pernal Edge. <laughs> God damn, that was terrible. <laughs> that was long, Chewie, to say that was really good, job. Vernal Edge is Vernal Edge is well you described the main bit there, but um essentially the idea is that you start out as a character named Vernal, which I didn't realize was her name initially. Um and all you pretty much know for the a good chunk of the game is that um she is here in these on these floating continents in search of her father because she wants to kill him. And throughout the game, you're kind of learning why she wants to kill him. And hopefully, you know, see if she's come through. But what I will say, compared to a lot of other games of this ilk, is that it performs the actual execution of this very differently than I'm used to. Usually in these kinds of games, you are kind of placing a castle or linked city blocks or whatever. And you get around, you know, pretty much unlocking new areas with new abilities. But in the case of this game, instead of having to be one interlocked location, instead you get a ship and you fly between a variety of floating islands. Each floating island representing its own individual or <laughs> unique um, dungeon of sorts where you can actually find a map to get a better understanding of where you're at, look for treasure and the like and kind of explore it as its own place. And I'll get to why that's both good and slightly annoying at the same time later. But as you're actually progressing through the game, though, your main ways of combat are through the sword she's carrying, um, which can be used as a normal striking attack, like, you know, typical three-string combo or whatnot, uh, upward launch attack, a sliding attack, and like an up when you're in the air, you can push down and attack and do like a, a downward cleave attack with the sword. Combat and mechanics in this game are actually fairly smooth. Like, I like the fact that the sword can even be used in the air with the three-string combo to kind of hover a little bit to kind of, you know, you know, delay your descent from a jump. But overall, it's all about the battle in this game, and the strikes actually feel pretty solid. Um, you're pretty much slicing guys, you're bashing them around, trying to like knock them out of the sky or launch them into the air for a nice combo. But if it were as simple as that. Well, this game wouldn't be as challenging as it is, and this game is pretty challenging. So why am I saying it's a challenging game? Because, though you've probably heard this in 19 other different places, I'll just bear it to say it here as well. Combat in this game may well feel like it's been inspired by something like Devil May Cry, in that um, you do have your normal attacks, but enemies come packed with shields, which need to be taken out. You take out the shields by doing a guard move when they're doing certain attacks, and then when you guard and counter with your strike... You can knock down shield blocks from them there. And you can also just kind of do hold down the button for a charging attack as well. And when you unleash it and hit them with that, you knock off one of their guard meters too. You knock off enough of their guard meters, you can stagger them, and then use that time to do additional damage. You'll need to do that a lot because, again, enemies in this game are pretty relentless at times. And you'll want to kind of keep them on. They'll keep you on your toes working these moves out. You can also buy or acquire two additional ways to expand your you know, battle abilities. You have spells, which come in the form of discs. You can come across them as you're exploring the world, or you can buy them using currency from certain vendors. And the spells can be equipped to your character and triggered by using a combination of a button and one of the directional buttons on the cross pad of the controller. And they do a variety of different things, whether it's firing a laser firing a laser in a different direction, fireballs and shielding techniques and more. And you'll be getting a lot of use out of that too because that's your primary way of attacking enemies from a distance. Well, not necessarily the primary because there's one other way to do that as well, which I'll mention in a second as well. Um, the other way you can enhance your character and make them grow stronger is by way of memories. Think of memories as um, abilities that can enhance your repertoire. Like That's how you are able, that's how you're able to do things like double jumps or do enhanced versions of your upward attack, or your charge attacks. Um, you can find some that are usable for free. Others <clears throat> take a currency referred to as memory points, 
but you can enhance and extend the memory points at mount by finding hidden items throughout the game as well. So the more of those you get, the more you're able to equip to your character and further enhance your play style. Now, earlier I made a comment about another way to use a distance attack, and that comes in the form of your sword having a sub-ability. In fact, you need this sub-ability because actually the only way to heal yourself in this game as well is the pulse strike. You can use the Y button to throw your pulse weapon at an enemy, and if it collides with them, it kind of lodges itself inside of the foe. You can then use one of two abilities at that point to either attack from a distance and kind of siphon energy out of them while also doing damage, or the more powerful variant, you can actually fly at them from damn near anywhere on the screen and just do like a really cool slash and smash combo, which in turn will heal you for a lot more energy. But in both cases, one more so than the other, of course, you're left very vulnerable, so only use the attack when you feel as though you have a little bit of breathing room and can take the risk of being, you know, exposed a little bit. The thing that I mentioned earlier, and the thing that kind of bugs me a little bit about the open world mechanic that the game has, is that, is that initially I was like, yeah, this is pretty freaking awesome. I like the fact that I can just kind of get on my airship and fly to wherever the heck I want. But what the game ended up doing bits. with that is they kind of gate off each location dang near immediately with the patent and metroidvania abilities that you would need to progress further. So, for example, you might need the wall skip ability <clears throat> to get into a tower level, but you don't have that. And you'll you know get to what the we do level. have, though? Is it a pair of subs? No, it's 1,000 biddies from our good friend Chris, 35710. Chris, I love having you in here. You always find a way to make me smile. Uh... Not not you, Chris Taylor, other Chris with a K. Hey. But not the Chris with a K that co-hosted. It's a different Chris. <laughs> with This is always confusing when she comes in here and drops bits. But needless to say, Chris, thank you so much. Love having you here. And Simon just jumped off my lap and I can actually move my leg again. Yay. Hey. Tell us about Vernal Edge. <laughs> Thanks, Simon. I appreciate it, buddy. Um, but I'll take it from here. That so, bastard's eating now. <laughs> bastard. Um, so I'm trying to remember where I left off. At. Oh, so combat in this game, like I said before, is pretty cool because it has a combination of like taking down enemy shields, using spells that need to be like slowly recharged so you can't spam them, <clears throat> maxing out the ability to block, to take down walls of uh, enemy shields, guarding yourself, countering and siphoning energy out of enemies in such a way that it feels like a bit of a dance. Hence the Devil May Cry comparison, because you are constantly moving and dodging foes. In regards to combat, in fact, the one gripe I really have about is that I wish the enemy variety was better, and also that the enemy design was cooler. Because while I do enjoy fighting enemies, I've yet to come across an enemy where I'm like, <laughs> when I'm fighting it and going, wow, that is a really impressive enemy. I am glad this guy is here. It's just more like, Huh, more fodder to hopefully not kill me. Let's see how I progress through this one. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It just would be better if the foes were more you know, impressive or interesting to me. Um, for someone like Chris, however, I think one thing he'd appreciate about this game, too, is that I would say from the imagery and the design of it, it looks like a retro game, but not the usual retro game. Like It doesn't look like a Super Nintendo game to me or a Genesis game to me. In fact, I'd say it actually was like a, a blown up Game Boy Advance game from the font and the yeah. Like I look at the the text in this game and the uh, when you're in the menu scrolling through stuff and even just the way the the graphics for the characters are just kind of have that level of pixeliness to them. Like they're not yeah, I could they see look that like being they're not GBA, solid. Yeah. It's a very GBA looking game, which is a very rare error to see companies kind of you know pay homage to. Assuming that that was their intent here, I hope it was their intent here, because if it was, mission a freaking accomplished. Um, but I do find this game to be fun. It was a very big surprise to me. Came out of nowhere, and it ended up being a lot of fun to play. Um, it's one that I could see a lot of people picking up and getting into down the line as well, mainly because it taps into like you know good combat, good music, good you know graphics, and that bit of flying around exploration that skies of our carry um skies of arcadia was famous for back in the day um oh, all in all there's a game i miss oh yeah you and everyone else man that game was a peach um but yeah this game is a lot of fun i mean i mentioned my primary complaints for the most part but 
it's a fun time to play. Even if you find yourself running around being like, I'm not really engaged in this narrative or seeing how it plays out as it goes. I do think you'll still enjoy just flying to new places and saying, huh, I wonder what I'll find here. What loot will be hidden here? And that sometimes is enough. Well, the game's sitting at 22 bucks. What do you think? I mean, I feel like I'm kind of a broken record on this episode because I'd also go with this being a buy it title. It works for me. I thought this one was really cute and uh, I like having good games on our show. So I concur. Time is precious. Please don't be bad, Dave. <laughs> yeah, let's see if the next one keeps the trend up. The next game to talk about is The Wanderer Frankenstein's Creature, developed by LaBelle Games, published by Hidden Trap, released March 6th on the PS5 for $14.99. Plays the creature, a wanderer without memory or past, a virgin spirit in a completely fabricated body. To forge the destiny of this artificial being who is ignorant of both good and evil, you'll have to explore the vast world and experience joy and sorrow. Chris, what is going on in The Wanderer Frankenstein's Creature? Okay, so The Wanderer Frankenstein's Creature is um, basically... It's, it's, uh, it's a little hard to classify because it's part walking simulator and it's it's part kind of puzzle click uh, or like point and click but not not quite um so basically this game is a very artistic reinterpretation of the classic story of frankenstein's monster um which uh yeah frankenstein uh which had a actually a different title um let's see frankenstein or the modern prometheus which you know they couldn't decide on titles back then so they'd just be like here you go have both um very famous story although not one i've personally read um because you know it's it's old and it's a book <clears throat> um but this game has you ba- it basically follows the uh narration and story of uh the creature itself so this is frankenstein as told by the creature um and yes, I, I understand that Frankenstein is the name of the doctor, not the creature. But if I do call him Frankenstein, then don't don't come at me. Uh, but he doesn't look like the classic Frankenstein's monster. Uh, what we get here is just a black, like silhouetteish creature, um, draped with a with a stained white, like basically robe. Um, so you know we don't really uh the the glimpses we do get to see of details are done kind of abstractly so it's basically you're not wandering around like with the you know with the green monster with the the you know that weird haircut and like the bolts out of his neck and stuff like that like a herman (laughs) munster kind of situation so it's not that i wish it was but it's not um you start off like literally uh learning how to like activate your senses so you're walking around in like white light and like background starts to fill in as you're kind of gaining consciousness it's pretty cool um like i said everything in this game is done very artfully um you know the soundtrack is just top notch like atmospheric like you know shenanigans that you know will really make you feel the things um you know and if you walk to a certain area, then it might um, kind of unlock the rest of the uh, the backgrounds so that you can move on to a different place. And as you do, like, you know, the story is basically fed to you like a sentence at a time. Um, like I said, it's it's narrated by the creature who is kind of who establishes that he's writing this down years later after the events of this game. So it's a, you're kind of reading his diary and experiencing it at the same time. Um, so. Yeah, as you you basically go through like some of the familiar um, bits of the the you know I was gonna say film <laughs> the the story uh, like you know meeting people for the first time and uh, that starts to go well when you meet children and they they play ball with you and you actually get to play ball with some kids for a little bit uh, but then you meet adults and they're horrified at you and suddenly want to kill you for no reason at all um, and so it's. You know, but before that, you like you kind of revel in the beauty of nature and things like that. So it's like there's ups and downs all across the story. It's it's very uh, it it kind of traces along the same allegories that the that the story did of, um, you know, people not accepting something that's uh, unfamiliar or different. And also just how uh, nature is, you know, much better than people for the most part. (laughs) Um, So anyways, 
Uh, yeah, like basically the, you know, I'll leave the story to people who actually play the game, because if I give too much away, then the, the game, you can't buy the game. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, but yeah, so the gameplay is, like I said, it's walking around, uh, reading the story and occasionally interacting with stuff. And I do mean occasionally, you can go quite a while without interacting with anything, um, apart from the story. Uh, there's like... There's like kind of mini games that the game will do um, that are only of consequence in the story, uh, you know, choices to make. Apparently, there's uh, five endings in the game. So unlike the book, unless they came out with a choose your own adventure book of Frankenstein, I don't know. But um, yeah, it, there's there's different endings that like your very small decisions you make throughout the game uh, will affect. Uh, and then there's, like I said, mini games, like there's a, a game that's kind of a Simon Says, um, where you're discovering color and you have to like, um, basically walk in a certain pattern that is, you know, shown to you and then you have to do it. Um, but you can look at it as many times you want. It's only like six things. So it's not, none of it's hard. Uh, none of this game is hard or, or any way like, uh, confusing or challenging. It's just, like I said, you walk around until you get the prompt to interact with something, then you interact with it, you get more story. Uh, like I said, occasionally you do get a decision. Um, the only thing I kind of was like, uh, about is that sometimes the decision um, marker will come up and you can instantly decide. So if you're like kind of mashing the button to like do something else, then you might accidentally make a choice. And you can't really rewind your choices. So... You know, because, again, this is an art game, not, like, an actual, like, novel game. So there's, as far as I know, there's no, like, rewinding uh, anything. You just kind of... So, you know, if you're trying to, like, go through and go with a specific set of choices, then you got to really watch out for, like, times when it'll prompt you to make a decision and you, you know, have to push the right button at the right time. That's it. I mean, it's amazingly beautiful. The art's amazing. The music is amazing. The game itself is is very minimal. Um, so for that reason, you know, it's, it's an experience more so than a game, but at least it does try to, to go for like gameplay stuff and it's not simply a walking simulator. So that's kind of cool. Cool. Well, the game right now is sitting at 15 bucks. What are your thoughts? Uh, for folks who appreciate like a good, like, you know, story told via the medium of, of interactivity. Yeah, it's a buy it. It's it's worth looking at. I mean, it's got some great moments in it. It's great storytelling. Um, it's based on like literally the first sci fi novel in existence. It's um, yeah, it's a great little little um, piece of software that'll, you know, make you think about things. And like I said, the music astounding, you know, definitely worth a listen. Uh, you know, if you're looking for a game, then um, might I suggest you know, Dr. Franken or uh, or maybe like Monster in My Pocket for games where you can actually play as Frankenstein's monster <laughs> if you're um, if you're really wanting that. But uh, yeah, this one is is more of a reflection on on existential like ism and the nature of humanity and whatever. So that's that's what you're getting out of your 15 bucks here. And I do recommend it for that. Cool. Sounds good. Yeah. All right, one last game to talk about tonight is called Spin Rhythm XD, developed and published by Super Spin Digital, released out of early access March 14th on Steam for $19.99. Enter the Rhythm Dimension, an homage to classic rhythm arcade games like Guitar Hero and DDR, with a modern aesthetic and soundtrack, match colors and beats, spin, tap, flick, and flow through the juiciest beats in the universe, supports multiple control styles, including MIDI DJ gear on steam pernell tell us about your time playing spin rhythm xd spin rhythm xd is a music game where you are pretty much playing a variety of electronic club i guess some house music is in there too and then just a variety of just tracks up to about 40 or so mostly licensed i could tell um not like when i say license i don't mean like you know i think it's funny i'm even saying it's because my ass listens to music, like all kinds of weird ass music these days but not like typical radio tracks, but more like um, famous, like, I guess like composers that people might know, like Two Mellow is a popular composer, but you're also not hearing Two Mellow on the radio, but he's a freaking awesome artist, by the way, so give him a listen. Or Lena Rain from like, uh, what was that game, Celeste? So like artists like that are on here. Yeah, um, they, the and, Steam page mentioned 60 licensed tracks of the juiciest beats in the known universe 
from Nitro Fun, AU5, Mo Shop, Hyper Potions, Came- uh, Camellia, Hyper Potions, Anamana Gucci, there's a good one, Panda Eyes, Temanite, Tut Tut Child, Pegboard Nerds, Tristam, Maxo, Tokyo Machine, Rogue, Too Mellow that you mentioned, Anomaly, more. So a lot of that music. That goes to show there. you, right? It's a lot of music, and I bet somebody's listening right now is like, they probably heard like Anomaly. Like, oh, shit, Anomaly's in that? Whereas I was like, Anomaly. But I was like, ooh, Hyper Potions. I like <laughs> those guys. Um, so then the gameplay style, like one way or another, whether you like the music or not, you may come to appreciate it regardless by the gameplay itself, because the gameplay in this game is actually pretty different from the norm in regards to rhythm games. So you are following along a track of music. Think sort of akin to like a Guitar Hero or uh, Amplitude or something. Yeah, looking but, at the looking at the gifs on the Steam page, it's it seems very familiar with the highway and notes coming down. But then they're shifting and twisting and all, yes. all these other mechanics and who's a what's it's. And that's where the game very much differs. It makes itself different and stand out from the crowd. Because whereas you're not necessarily just hitting notes, you do do that. But it's the way you do it. Um, you have a gauge at the bottom that is pretty much the overlapping line that overlaps the notes. And when you overlap, you're supposed to tap it. However, there is a more precise part within that line. And as you're progressing down the stage, you need to turn the dial on the line left and right so that that precision mark overlaps the notes that are coming onto the screen. And at the basic level of the game, and by basic, I mean the least difficult mode, um, what you have to do is pretty much just do one of two things. Either A, if the you either hover the, the color the note over the top of it, whether it's like a blue note or a red note, you have to hover a blue or red section of the turn dial over the note. And then if it's a full size note, you have to tap the um, the rhythm button. I can't say a normal button because I had to configure the Steam Deck to just match whatever keyboard key represented it. So I have no idea what button it is. <laughs> but um, you tap the button. So you played this beat. on the deck. I played it on the Steam Deck. It took a little bit of finagling, but I was able to get it to work, and it worked out fine in that way. Um, Or sometimes you just have to let the thing hover over the notes as they come by and not have to press the button, just let it happen. And kind of like how Guitar Hero did it, sometimes that's harder to do than you think it is. Like, just not press the button when you clearly want to, because it's right there. Um, But... That is the simplest way to play the game. And, if, and some people will be completely content just by doing that. However, if you find yourself thinking, oh, I can need a little bit more. This needs to be a little bit harder. Well, yes, the heck what? There are multiple difficulties in this game. And unlike a lot of rhythm games, each difficulty introduces a completely new mechanic that the game will teach you about before you step into it. And the game starts to get pretty damn hard very fast. Which is a good thing, in my opinion, because it gives you more if you need it. But if you don't need it, it's simple enough that anyone can play it. And I say that in a way where unless you have an ego that says, oh, this is what babies do. I can't have fun. Then that means that whatever difficulty you choose, there should be a ceiling that you should be comfortable working with. Because they intentionally say, well, we don't need to bring in all the mechanics for this. Let people enjoy what they what they're, what they can actively handle in regards to the mechanic juggling so to speak because eventually you will be like doing the things i mentioned before hold notes hold notes that have to be turned while holding the notes so you'll hold the button from one side of the screen and then turn it with the line when it approaches and then let it go at the end and then immediately Fucking jump into yeah. another string of notes it can get pretty wild. And then you have to hit buttons that um, that represent a line that crosses over the pad as well. And then some. There was another mechanic they introduced on the hardest setting I attempted to get to. But I said, fuck this. I'm done for a little while. I'll hey, come back Kirsten later. Again. That's right. Because spin rhythm <laughs> makes me swear. <laughs> you know what? Well, but, I know what makes me swear. Biddies. Nope. When someone drops a sub, well, it makes you swear. Because you go, fucking Yeah. <laughs> so big also, shout out to I see you ate one before. Uh thank you for coming in and checking out my stream. Uh maybe we'll raid you with rock band if you're playing later. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see who's going and playing later on. But I just wish I could properly guess what people were doing. You're like, I'm like, is it biddies? No, it's a sub. Is, is it a sub? sub? No, it's biddies. 
<laughs> you just have to go to the Twitch room, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Someday it's going to happen. I swear. I swear. <laughs> but I'm on the phone. You don't have to. I don't think. I think you can watch it without actually being on Twitch, right? Well, no, I'm sure if I was at my laptop, it wouldn't be hard at all. But it's the oh. it's the way I record that I don't have the screen for it. Um, but if I actually, you know, go to the office for an episode, I should be I'd be able to watch it that way. But then I couldn't play on my TV and drink soda at the same time. <laughs> you know, makes things complicated. You shouldn't be but, gaming during a podcast. You should be podcasting during a podcast. I do uh, both. Y- yeah, none of us <laughs> play video games during <laughs> podcast oh time. <laughs> Who the heck has the time? Uh-huh. I think I'm the time. only one who doesn't game during the show. <laughs> oh my god, I have to. I game on every show. I game hell <laughs> on live streams. I'll game while talking on the podcast, while texting in the chat, all at the same time. Oh, and so you text say, in other chats, but not our chat. You goddamn right, because I'm at a studio at that time. I'm you at the, I'm at the microphone, bitch. These guys can hear me. <laughs> <laughs> and you tend to be like, hey, such and such in the chat asked, what's your favorite soda? And I'll go, Joe's bitch. It's delicious. Yeah, I swore again. I'm at that point where I'm just on it right now. It's just oh, fun. Pernel. We, we have Pernell after dark right now. Yeah. That's right. Pernell after the dark. Jones is coming out. Jones's flavor soda. Jones's brand soda, which if you've never heard of that, you need to get on it. Well, anyway, um, Spin Rhythm is a game that we were talking about <laughs> before we got sidetracked <laughs> horribly. <laughs> Pernell Tangents, I love them. But no, Spin Rhythm is great. Spin Rhythm is legitimately good. I was interested in it when I came across it. I requested it. They obliged us with a copy, and it did not disappoint. Like I said, the only thing that really will throw people off, because it definitely got with me, is that it's not my the music in it is not my usual flavor, but as I played more of the game, there were tracks that became my flavor by virtue of me trying to pass them and do well. So with that said, I'm coming from experience when I say just because you read that roster of artists on there and go, if you might go, oh, I don't know these people, or this isn't my kind of this isn't my kind of music, that does not mean that the music will not suit you while you're playing the game. And who's to say they want to expand the game with more music later anyway? It's very possible. But it's fun. Lots of fun. Yeah, that's good to hear. It's also 20 bucks. so what's your verdict? It's $20 of fun. Buy it. Yeah, hat trick. I Yay. swear I'm not going to my corporations. I swear. Yeah. Are these all buy it's today? All buy it's as I, as I polish my gold ring. Yeah, it, it was it, a buy it. All buy it. Alice Gear, you gave a buy it. Blocky Farm was a buy it. Pernell Edge was a buy it. Uh, the Pernal Wanderer, Edge. was was that, a, was that a solid buy it, or were you on the fence with that one? No, I said buy it. All right. Yeah. I'm old. I, I don't said, remember. You know, I just said just make sure that you're aware that it's it's not it's more um, experience than game. Yeah. I feel like this might be the first episode I've been on where every every game was a buy it. That's it's funny good, too because so there's there's always like a little hidden link in games that I review. I can never help it because I I have no control over what you know. Uh, which games I I review when and today's is like uh. It's it's like, you know, well, if you're fine with it being just the tutorial levels of like a bigger game, then buy this. And if you're fine with this just being like, a you know, <laughs> I don't know. It's like I always see these similarities and that's that I wish there was uh, in the two games I did today. It's like I like what I played, but I wish there was more kind of thing. Yeah. You know, it's anyway, a, it's a yeah. good problem to have, at least. It's yeah, like yeah, saying, yeah. Hey, it's it's well, fine. It's like. Not every game is like uh, going to be a you know the be all end all of you know some big three hour or like three hundred hour sandbox type thing you know <laughs> epic three hour sandbox title. Oh, no. <laughs> I would I would love to play a three hour sandbox title. That would be amazing. You could just you beat the game in three to, hours. You wouldn't even have time to build the sandcastle. It'd already be I over. I don't mean I don't mean you're limited to three hours. I mean like that you could just beat the game in three hours, but you it's a sandbox, so you can do what you want. I mean, isn't <laughs> Breath of the Wild technically that? I think you That's have to I heard. have like yeah, you have to have like a uh, some skill for that. But yeah, I hear it can be done. So there you go, oh. Breath of the Wild million dollar idea. Get on it, Nintendo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, music this episode. A magical game. Music this episode. Uh, we had backbeat. So how about we play something funky from the One Ups? I'm doing One Ups. Anyone have a, a request from the One Ups, or is it going to be my pick? Your pick. You we pick the last ones. Cool. Does anyone have any final words to end the show? 
When will someone make a three up moon band? Ooh. I'm ready. <laughs> the world is ready. <laughs> Thank you.